Nigeria is ranked sixth in the world for organized crime according to the 2023 Global Organized Crime Index. The report stated that Nigeria continues to face a series of security challenges, corruption and other criminal activities. According to the survey done by the Global Initiative Against Transnational Organized Crime, the status of organized criminality in Nigeria increased by 0 0.13 points. Nigeria scored 7.28 of 10 points, which makes it the sixth in the world and second highest in Africa behind the Democratic Republic of Congo and ahead of South Africa. Joining me to discuss this is Oponabo Inko Tarya. He is a civil rights advocate. Mr. Tarya, thank you so much for joining us. Good evening. Well, good evening, Maria, and good evening, Nigeria. I think the first thing that crosses the mind of the average person is that why are we not topping other lists, especially when it comes to productive things and positivity. But then again, this also does shed the light on things that we need to take a look at uh, as Nigerians. So I ask you, um, why do you think we continually top the list? The question, the answer is not perfect. Uh, I am not surprised as stimulating as it is, but I'm really not surprised. Because uh, when you look at our antecedents and the antecedents of our leaders, it is not surprising to find those on that list. And when you talk of uh, crimes, you're not just talking of organized crimes such as in Boko Haram, such as in the uh, uh, Niger Delta militancy and all that. It goes beyond that. We, also, we should also talk about institutionalized crime that is going on in the country. And when you put all of this together, it's a portmanteau of issues. When you put all of this together, you will agree with me, especially as in Nigeria, that yes, we don't even need to be the safe in the world, we ought to be the mind in the world. If you consider, take other violence, all these other issues. You are talking of Boko Haram is well organized. You are talking of uh, militancy, of course, is well organized. You are talking of uh, a lot of them. Then if you also consider the Bura Thai issue, that alone obviates the need for any further proof that this is state organized crime. Hmm. How did this all, all these things start? Elections. Most of these boys were recruited by politicians who are desperate to win their elections. I can say this authoritatively. Who are desperate enough to win their elections. And most of these boys were armed. They were given guns, they were given money. At the end of the elections, these guns were not retrieved from them. Even when I sent your mate to retrieve these guns from them, the boys refused. They said no. And they are, because they also enjoy the fruits of crime, with their benefactors also enjoy as well by extension. They refuse to surrender their guns. Look at Tom Polo, for example. I'll use him as a very good example. Whether I would like it or not, I'm very sorry to say, can be classified as a criminal. But who is the child of the waterways? The same Tom Polo. So, in so many instances, the find that you have rewards for crimes and criminality rather than being penalized for your acts taken against a nation, you are being rewarded for those acts taken against a nation. And that's why you have that. What is the Navy doing? Why would such a man be in charge of the water, uh, water weeds? A man you accused that was also declared wanted by the federal government, condemned by the federal government as a criminal, is the same man being employed by the federal government to protect water weeds. What is the job of the Navy? What is the job of the civil defense? Why is the civil defense weak? Most times they intentionally weaken the government institutions, and in the case where they want to someone to strengthen those institutions, you have some bad eggs in the system, some sabotage in the system that will ensure that the effort, their efforts are brought to not <coughs> excuse because they benefit tremendously from it. I also talked of the Deborah Thai issue. You agree with me that the Deborah Thai successor, the uh, the army chief, who was eventually killed, or who eventually died controversial circumstances, said to the world that there was nothing to show for the amount of money released to Burata. The NSA, Buaris NSA, also said this to the world. I mean, not say, I'm not saying you spoke to Nabu. They all spoke, press conference, that, look, there's nothing can be, nothing, there is nothing to show uh, to justify the amount of money being released to Burata. Burata was rewarded with what? Ambassador of Meritocracy, mediocrity is against meritocracy. And in situations that have their spent. And these are the same persons who enjoy the fruits of crime. You see them living lavishly, driving SUVs, bulletproof vehicles, building big houses, and so on. 
they wanted the younger ones, which means there is a reward in crime and criminality. Just like elections, they will tell you, win whichever way you want to win, and we go to court. The criminal is the first to tell you, go to court. You know why? Even the judiciary is compromised. You also have justices and judges who are criminals in the judiciary. I will tell you, don't tell me, why are you sure? Look at how I said it. His wife, who was the president of the Court of Appeal, when he said to his colleagues that most of you would have been here just for my wife, it was open, and they tried to help him. The Adama, the Adama said, the female judge who cried out, money that given to my colleagues, but I will reject. She cried out in the recent uh, petition to Buddha. So, you need to get that proof? Hmm. These days, you see judges of mopping with governors and of mopping with ministers and so on. It was a taboo in those days. It was a, my dad was a judge. It was a taboo. You dare not. In fact, once you become a judge, you are you are restricted from certain, doing certain things. Even your membership of a club is withdrawn. If it's not withdrawn, let's say you withdraw it. Let me not say it is wrong. You withdraw it. Hmm. Because you don't want to be seen intermingling or mingling with the public. But this day, it's not like, it's not a tripping thing of pride. So see that a judge will go to government houses and see chief judges sit there for hours waiting for a governor. Is that not shame? So when we talk of crime, you are not you are talking of a portmanteau of issues. You have the issue of the uh, uh, militants, you have the issue of the Boko Haram, you have the issue of all that, then you also have the institutionalized crime. As we speak today, what is PSCN doing? They give you bills you did not consume. They uh, surreptitiously increase, increase their tariffs. That is what we pay today, not what we pay, or what we are supposed to pay. Is that not crime? Is the system blind? The rumor of something is it not crime? Hmm. Let me Where are the facts in Lima before you remove that subsidy? What is the driving force? You said, oh, people were fleecing the treasury to drive through subsidy. What are you supposed to do? As we speak today, nobody has named and shamed anybody involved in this. Mr. Nkotayo, let me butt in here because um, there's also that it's very easy for oh, when, we talk, when we talk about crime, it's very easy it's for us. It, it, nobody has, nobody has Told us. Hold on, hold on. It's very easy. Hey. It's easy for us to point fingers at the people who are in office, and I'm not in any way absolving them. But then there are people who aid and abate these people because if the people themselves, um, who are society, hold a mirror to themselves and say, "Well, we will not allow for this to happen," maybe we would not have this. Maybe, 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 maybe we would not have what you call institutionalized crime. So again, I'm asking. Are we not playing a part in this crime that you seem to just only mention? I, remember, I just told you, I said, I, what is the government doing? The, the eyes closed. I asked the question. You said, aid and abet. What did uh, Abacha say? He said, no crime can be successful without the permission of the government. Why is it that you will still foul? and you go to prison, and another person will steal spoon, and you, uh, and you will steal a uh, car or a house, and will be freed on technical grounds. But put that said, technicality in law is even fraudulent. What is the issue of technicality in law? They say it's an ass, we agree. Whichever way you want it to go, it's like the pendulum. But then we are talking of justice, not, we are not talking of judgment. Look at what you call the CCTV uh, chairman. What has happened to his case? Because he assaulted a former. What has happened to his case? Is that not crime? What they do is they go to court and the most uh, the uh, matter is that John Sinai forever. Why they try to settle behind doors? Is that not crime? How did that party arrive as Senate president? The electoral act is Lucy. Let us face facts. Please, let us stop absorbing people. The electoral act is Lucy. You cannot have two nominations. Operator asked him this question. They said, ah, calm down, calm down. Is that a crime? Let Why? Because I find you the state president, a senator, because of his clouds? Let's just let's, let's call a spade a spade. It's okay. crime. So what are you telling the next man? What are we telling our kids? 
Anything goes. Perfect. Let's talk, Anything goes. Let's talk about so, let's talk about solutions and social engineering because what you're talking about now is that of course there is a mindset that has obviously uh, taken over. Um, how do we socially yes. engineer a change of mindset? Because, I mean, whatever we're trying to talk it about, whatever we're is, trying I to do. do mine is radical. We have to, you know, they say you, you destroy a system to save a system. How so? I have a, I have a radical approach to this. I, I will call for the uh, generalist medicine panache. Yes. A situation where almost you're laughing because you know the story. You know, he, he took over power, handed over the first time, was not satisfied, and he did it again, and you saw what happened. I want the Jerolins approach. Because if today you say these people are going to repent of their sins, it's going to be a fleeting illusion. They've stolen so much, their kids are beneficiaries of their test that they will not even want to change. There's an army in the system. A mindset where anything goes. It has permeated every aspect, every fabric of our society. That's how the general system. Well, well who's, going, who, call, who's, who's going to do that? I also I, call for this. Again. That's what I'm saying. We need to, it is going to happen. It's going to happen very soon. Because when you're pushed to the wall, you bounce back with a double their force. Nobody will align himself with the appreciator at that point. Again, again, I'd like to put a caveat out there. We're not in any way calling for violence or any such. Uh, but then, if we must have a radical change or mindset reengineering in this country, um, who's going to lead the charge? Because you know, we are very, very often I, I we say to, government I was, should. I was, asking, I was asking the question. Yeah, I was asking the question. I just it's going to be spontaneous. And I said the answer is the dress you asked me. But, then but, again, what, you cannot compete. Where did we end with NSAS? Where did we end? Where did we end with NSAS? I mean, oh, I just, a dress rehearsal does not give you a conclusion, it gives you an inkling. That's why I said a dress rehearsal. And it was a spontaneous reaction. It does not give you the, the, the conclusion, it only tells you what will happen. That's why it's a dress rehearsal. We don't rule out the Sahel. The Sahel uh, uh, pardon me. You know what I'm talking about. Because I'm on your station, so that NPC does not write to you tomorrow. I don't want to give it a name, but you know what I'm talking about. Sahel, Sahel India. It can also happen. And uh, I can tell you 90% of Nigerians are praying for the Sahel medicine. But that, but that in itself, but that in itself is not a solution. Unfortunately, I, I feel that this is a very skewed mindset that we think that. Um, calling for a junta would solve our problems. These people in themselves are people who no, just the constitution. No, no, they do not, not believe in not, democracy. Why you would we what? be calling for a junta? It does not solve the problem. No, do you know what? Do you know what? Something might not be right, but expedient. Hear that. How is it, it right. How is it expedient? Mali, Mali right as of today, Mali that has I, I, Mali's junta. Not, I, hold, hold on, hold on. As at, as at today, Mali's junta has again postponed its democratic elections because, again, I when soldiers are in power. Postponement. What is, what, what? Let, me, let me finish because you are asking the question I would have answered if you allowed me. Go ahead, please. Who gives a hoot about the postponement? Who gives a hoot about postponement? Who wants the bad? Who wants democracy in the hurry? Do we have democracy in Nigeria? What we have is just civilian coup, covered up in niceties and the complexities. That's all we have every couple of years. Is there democracy? What's the difference between the junta and being imposing microscopic view on, on the majority of Nigerians? What's the difference? If you vote for Mr. A and they give it to Mr. C, is that democracy? So what's the difference? There's no difference. The only thing is that you don't have a legislative arm. That's not the difference when you have a junta. And you have agree with me that. As a result of the executive recklessness, we don't even have, what we have is not even what we can call the executive arm. What we have is Ministry of Lawmaking. You can't describe that. And it's just where, uh, what's his name, uh, Minister of Aviation, President Kiyambo, is telling me when they are about to clear him, a senior president has to leave the city to go to the presidential villa to get clearance from uh, the parliament. Is that what you call legislation? 
But two wrongs don't make no, it no, right. No, no, so no, 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 uh, how are we going from frying pan to fire? You say, oh, well, since this no, one is not so you great. You destroy a system, and that's what we call it. You destroy Look, let me tell you why this is going on, because there are no punitive measures. Everybody is allowed to do what he wants to do with impunity. When they take over, you are forcing me to give it a demo. I'm, I don't want the uh, plus TV in trouble with that. We're not giving But when they anymore. take over, for example, when they take over and do the cleansing, because we need the cleansing, and do that cleansing, nobody is in support of a military takeover. But when it is necessary, and most of these criminals are forced of their uh, wealth and so on, and are meant to face a crime. It will serve as a lesson to a lot of people. Look, the minds are skewed. Those days, you are being respected for your intelligence and your academic laurels. Today, they ask you, who book help? Because let me say the help. Who book help? That's what they ask you today. Today, you have PhD holders who got their first degree to PhD as politicians who are either legislators or uh, commissioners or ministers. Before they got that appointment, there was no single uh, uh, qualification attached to the name. Okay. You have a minister who is a lawyer today who did not do NYC. What are you telling the younger ones? In, in closing... And there's a justification for... So in, why, why do... Why, 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 why NYC? Why am I doing NYC? Why will I send my kids to not die in the north for nothing? Meanwhile, she can be a minister and a president without conflict. I can also be a president without having anybody who knows me, who knew me in school. Okay, in, clo I in closing. From secondary from primary school to university, uh, leave me leave you. In I closing, know. we have to go, Mr. Um, <laughs> we have to go, Mr. Now, after I leave school to university, I will now invite Maria to come and testify that I went to school. Only Maria. From we have oh, to go. Unfortunately, about? we're out of time, Mr. Uh, we have to go. When there is no when, when uh, I'm very soon I'll bring my to come and with my picture on it and bring someone to show who was born years after me to show that I went to I did why. Mr. Tyre, if, if that happened, what happened to me? We have to go. And we talk of corruption. We have to go. Thank you very much. Thank you very much. Uh, Upanabo Inko Tire is a good <laughs> governance advocate. Thank you so much for speaking with us on the show tonight. We appreciate it. Thank you very much. Thank you. All right. Thank you. Thank you. Well, that's it on the show tonight. <laughs> we'll be back tomorrow. Still talking for development. I'm Mary Anakon. Do have a pleasant evening.